I'm going to talk about how women in Latin America changed the political landscape and encourage civic engagement in the midst of serious democratic struggles. It happens in my home country, Ecuador, most Andean countries, but it extends in all the region. Um, I want also to start my presentation by basically telling you that Latin America is a highly connected um, space with a lot of, uh, of cleavages regarding um, the, the access for, for, for internet in some places, very remote areas, but in urban areas, it is highly connected. And this connection, if you will, this, this, this in the internet access and the access for social media have made um, possible, have made it possible for um, social movements, uh, indigenous groups, so marginalized groups as well, LGBTQ, um, to have their voice and access to other, uh, other political spaces that have been in, content, in constant struggle for the past decade or so. Um, we found also, a, 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 um, how do you call this? Like, a, like, this, like the, 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 the perfect grounds for other sorts of polarization, you know, and that have grounds and real, you know, they, they have grounds on, on real social problems, mostly deferring to, uh, referring to, to the lack of, the, of governments, you know, to act upon social issues. But in most cases, also this polarization has helped other political actors from the other political spectrum to, to foster, you know, um, um, to foster the struggles that are uh, grounded from, from the grassroots organization, but they're not. They're mostly instrumentalized, if you will. And this is something that women, that women political women are faced with every day because political women, you know, it's hard for them to access to, to being part of the political process. It's hard for them. Although we have laws that encourage political participation of women, and it's actually enforced on the creation of, of lists for the represent, representatives on the different various parties, political parties, it is very complicated for them to act upon our own issues, the issues that attain us. Most of our countries are, are extremely, um, extremely conservative for social and, and for gender issues in the, on the majority. Um, for example, access for the access for uh, birth control is not is, is not a, is not part of a, of a, of, a, of a public health policy. Uh, just recently, Argentina had the chance to change uh, a law that actually you know condemned women for having abortions, and these struggles have been part of our agenda for the past decade. And it's, they're still very hard. And it's basically the only country well on also Uruguay, that can allow this to happen. Whereas thousands of women, especially young women, teenage women, die every year because of neglect, um, teenage pregnancy, and other health healthcare issues. So what happens when, when women start you know, accessing the, the, the public agenda through politics and the use of social media? It, it starts to create some kind of legitimacy to these issues. But some of them are forced to keep quiet, to not voice out their opinions regarding these issues, because of the, 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 the because of their political parties will also try to hinder these this struggles. They try to silence their voices. So what we do is go back to the internet and social media mostly, especially Twitter, for example, can set up a public agenda and it does, and it helps a lot of women. Unfortunately, when the, in the midst of a political campaign, for example, women are also the first, the, the, the political actors, if you will, they are the most attacked um, through trolling, you know, practices throughout social media. Uh, their accounts are taken down. We have to work a lot with, with, uh, with, with um, you know, with intermediaries and, and, and basically the, the directors of the regional offices of Twitter, Facebook, etc to stop and prevent and identify who are the, 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 the women that are in politics that want to do a change and how to protect them. It has been a struggle. It has to be, um, it has been, I don't know, perhaps five, six, 
10 years for, from, from the last decade actually, when we started to use social media as a tool, as an effective tool to set up a political agenda. And we're still doing it and it's a, it's a constant struggle. I'm gonna give you some numbers, for example. Um, in Ecuador, as I said before, like 18 million people, around 18 million people. And we have a strong digital divide, especially in rural areas. But when you get into the urban areas, we have most all the all, uh, most all the population with internet access, access, mobile access. About 14 million um, users of of uh, of cell phone devices or access directly to optic uh, optic fiber. So with with these disparities. What we have is, is, a, is a potential a serious gap between rural communities that are every day, now they're smaller and they're, they're becoming more sparse. Most of the migra internal migration comes from rural communities, indigenous communities, indigenous women. And this disparity also is also reflected upon the, the economic um, health issues, access to many, to, to other, other type of, of policies that governments should guarantee at least, and we can have this, but we have a, a huge community, especially uh, social media users, WhatsApp users, that tend to fall onto what we call uh, misinformation practices. So if most of, the, of our information comes from social media, either Facebook or WhatsApp, what we have is, uh, is um, is a digital -like ecosystem with a, with tons of, uh, of 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 issues with 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 the truth regarding facts, and people are not doing or taking um, into consideration either our political actors or governments. What can they do to promote a healthy digital environment that will not con continue? To you know, to 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 affect women in politics initially, to, that will stop uh, with um, with violence against women in every form and sense, um, health, uh, public health issues such as teenage pregnancies, access to to as I said before, access to to birth control, as a public as a public policy. So what we have is 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 a society that that is a struggling with a real reality that it has been created system systemically for the past years on social media and a government and a state that is completely disconnected with, with their needs, with the needs of their people, with the struggles of their people, with what we have and fear about and the notion of what is meant to happen for the good, for the good of everybody, as a, you know, as in the sense of, of, of having a, a healthy, uh, civil society, um, a healthy environment for thriving in, in different ways. Even the, 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 the least, the minimum effect of respect towards our government officials or our politicians. So what's going on in Latin America so far is, is, um, is, a, is that we are seeing a battleground. A battleground that is, there, there are the small battles every day unfortunately from a polarizing society. It happened in Ecuador in October, 2019. It happened in Chile also at the same time. And it's happened in, in, in Colombia later on. And it's a place where the struggles are always held in social media. And what we need is more women with enough voice to, 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 to at least um, acknowledge, make sure our memory you know, holds intact our struggles and it's it's as I said before it's like every day there, it's a small battle sometimes we win sometimes we lose but it's something that we have to make sure it happens all the time and extends on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on, on a period of time so things can change like as I said before what happened recently in Argentina we still have very how can I put this put it this way we have old um we have uh, uh, bodies of law that have been drafted like in the 1950s or 40s and that still do not acknowledge all the changes are taking place in society. Um, I believe COVID-19 also was a big wake up call 
I mean, it happened globally, of course, and it's a, it has been a wake up call for, for all the governments and, and countries everywhere. But what I found, I find quite interesting is that finally, I mean, the, 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 the fear that we're facing every day, you know, just, you know, to, to go to work, to find work, the huge financial and economical crisis has made us believe, believe change our, our set of beliefs or interests. And I, I'm hoping to, to have a new space for, uh, for these voices that were silenced, have been silenced for, the, for, for decades, for women, for example, in a different light, not as acting um, puppets of older male politicians, but really as actors of, that have their own voice and that can do and specific uh, significant changes on policy because it has it has been proven and for us it's a, it's a battle as i said before like an everyday battle and we hope to continue with it so um, there was I, I want to refer at this point to the argentinian case um, particularly with uh, with their their abortion laws and how it became a struggle that it's, it's been like five years right now, finally five, perhaps seven years, basically through a social movement called uh, Maria Verde, like green tide. Um, most of the women, you wear um, handkerchief, a green can handkerchief. So the idea is to start, you know, generating some kind of, 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 of civil civic conscious all around Latin America, we have a green movement. Also, the green, the, the green, yeah, the green tide. Also in Ecuador, we have it everywhere, because we do not have access decent policies for women regarding their their own reproductive rights. As I said before, it's been a struggle. Unfortunately, my country is one of the has one of the highest pregnancy rates of pre of teenage pregnancies in in the region. It's it's awful. It's one of the top ten in the world. And there is nothing going on or happening regarding policy. It's like everybody tries to ignore some the, the, the elephant in the room, <laughs> and this happens everywhere. So, um, in mostly Latin American are Catholic countries, right? And it, there has been a lot of, of also back backfire from conservative groups, um, even you know the Catholic Church itself and many others. That we're trying desperately in many ways to, to promote this division, this sense of polarization. And it happened on, this, on social media. So you either have the, the pro, pro, pro choice or you know, the, the anti-abortionist groups, and they were violent. Eventually it came down to, to, to physical struggles on, on the streets before the pandemic. So the pandemic didn't stop the movement itself. It, the movement became stronger online. And when the bill uh, needed to be uh, discussed on, on you know, the, the Senate, it became, it became obvious that the only way for women to have a voice, is, it, was, it was because it was replicated, not only in Argentina, but everywhere in Latin America. So it became, for weeks, it became a trending topic in our country, it became a trending topic in Mexico, it became everywhere a trending topic because we needed to back up this struggle somehow. And I believe, I am convinced that social media has a more powerful effect on, on changing the attitudes, the political attitudes, not only of, of voters, but of, of uh, you know, senators and other representatives, political representatives, because of the fear they have and the backlash that social media imposes on, upon them. So it also has a negative side. There were a lot of, of uh, finger, finger pointing at politicians, but in a very negative way, threats, physical threats towards women, towards political actors, etc. And the, in real life, you know, the police can, can, you know, reach and do so much. But in many ways, we have lost our, that fear. We have lost the fear of, because we live with a fear of death every day since the pandemic. So many laws have been changed this year 
we have witnessed monstrous atrocities regarding corruption, for example, and that's where women have voiced out their opinions and it all happened on social media. So I have, I believe that, as I said before, our struggles, our everyday struggles, our battles are still, you know, the tip of the iceberg, but we can do a lot more, a lot much more. El violador eres tú.